Hi, I Aziz welcome you to Codemaster and in this video I am going to talk about this problem. So let's get started. So the problem is given as you are given a number and you have to count set bits in binary representation of a given number. Okay. So for the sake of simplicity, I am assuming that we are only dealing with 4 bits number. Okay. So let's understand this with an example. So let's say the number is 5 and the binary representation of number 5 is 0101. 0, 1. And in binary representation of 5, 2 bits are set. First bit is set at position 1 and the second bit is set at position 3rd. Okay. That's why the output of this input is 2. In case of 0, there are no set bits. That's why the output is 0. In case of 13, there are 3 set bits. So the output is 3. So now, please pause this video and think about a solution to solve this problem. So let's first discuss the brute force approach to solve this problem. So let's say the number is 13 and this is the binary representation of number 13. So the idea is simple. What we do, we simply traverse this binary representation from least significant bit to most significant bit. It means from right to left. And in each iteration, we check if the bit is set or not. If bit is set, then we increment our count. If bit is not set, we simply ignore it. So in this approach, we are going to use two techniques. So the first technique is how to right shift a bit. And we already know this technique. We have discussed in previous videos that how to right shift any bit. We simply use a right shift operator to right shift any bit. Okay. And then we also know that how to check if LSB is set or not. So it means we have discussed in previous video that to check if LSB is set or not, we simply bitwise end with we simply bitwise end with 1. If we get number not equal to 0, it means the LSB is set, means list significant bit is set. So we are going to use these two techniques to solve this problem. And it's going to be a brute force approach. Okay. So now let's see the implementation of brute force approach. So this is the implementation of brute force approach. So here it's a function count set bits and this is expecting an input n. We initializing the count variable to zero and then we are running a loop while n is greater than zero. And in while loop we are checking if the list significant bit is set or not. We are doing bitwise and one not equal to zero. If the list significant bit is set, then we are simply increment the value of count. And in the last, we are shifting bit by one position towards right. Okay. And at the last, we are simply returning the count of set bits. So let's uh, quickly dry run this code and see how it works. So let's say the value of n is 5 and the initial value of count is 0. So in first iteration, the value of n is 5. So the binary representation of 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. So we check that if NSB is set or not. In this case, LSB is set. So we increment count by 1. And then we simply shift 1 bit towards right. So now our n becomes 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay. In next iteration, our n is 0, 0, 1, 0. We check if LSB is set or not. This time it is not checked. This time it is not set. So we simply skip this if statement. And in second iteration, our n becomes 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. Because we shift the bit toward right. So in third iteration, our n is 0, 0, 0, 1. We check if the LSB is set or not. This time it is set. So in we increment the very, so we increment the value of count by one. It becomes two. And we simply, and then we shift one bit towards right. So now our n becomes 0, 0, 0. In fourth iteration, the while loop checks if n is greater than 0 and this time the condition becomes false because n is now 0 and we stop. And this code simply output 2 on the screen. Okay. So this is how this uh, brute force approach works. And talking about the time complexity of this function, so we have to count how many times this loop is going to run. So this loop is going to run number of bits present in the number. Right. So let's say we have considered 4 bit integers. So this loop is going to run four times. So the overall time complexity of this uh, code is going to be big O of number of bits. And if we have eight bits, then it's going to take big O of eight. If we consider 32 bit number, then it takes big O of 32. And if we consider 64 bit numbers, then it takes big O of 64. So this is a kind of linear order of growth, right? So this is not the optimal way to calculate number of set bits. We have other techniques also. 
and by using those techniques we can count number of set bits in less number of time right so now let's see the efficient approach to solve this problem and in this approach we are going to use brian kernighams algorithm so if you are not aware of brian kernighams algorithm i have discussed this algorithm in detail in previous video if you have not watched that video then i highly recommend to watch that video come back here and continue watching this video you can get the link of that video by clicking on the i button so this is the efficient implementation to solve this problem and what we are doing here we have a function count set bits that is uh, expecting an input n we have initialized count variable to 0 and then we are running a loop when n is greater than 0 and in each iteration we are simply using brian kernighams algorithm and after that we are incrementing count by 1 and we are simply returning count so let me recall brian kernighams algorithm for you so what it says if you do bitwise end of n with n minus 1 then your rightmost bit of n becomes unset so for example if we do so let's say you have number 2 and if you do bitwise end with n minus 1 means 1 then you can see that the your rightmost bit is unset now so this is what the brian kernighams algorithm says we are doing exactly the same thing here so let's quickly try run this code and see how it works so in case of n equal to 5 the initial value of count is 0 in first iteration the value of n is 0 1 0 1 that is greater than 0 so we enter into this loop then we are doing n equal to n and n minus 1 it means we are just unsetting the rightmost bit of 5 so now the n becomes 0 1 0 0 and we increment count by 1 in next iteration we have n as 0 1 0 0 that is also greater than 1 so we are again using brian kernighams algorithm and unsetting the rightmost bit so now our n becomes 0 0 0 0 and we increment count by 2 in next iteration our n is 0 so we come out of this loop okay so now you can see that in only two iteration our n becomes 0 and we get 2 as the output and how it is working because we have two set bits in 5 and we are unsetting this two bits one by one so that's why we are having only two iteration so talking about the time complexity of this function so how many times our loop is running so this loop runs exactly equal to number of set bits in the number and how we find number of set bits in a number we simply do log of n where n is the number for which we need to count the set bits and if we do log base 2 of 5 we get 2 although this is not the exact number it is just approximation we get by doing log base 2 of n so the time complexity of this approach is going to be big of log of n okay so far so clear so we have discussed this efficient approach to solve this problem now can we reduce it to big of 1 so we have some clever way to solve this problem and we can reduce the time complexity to big of 1 let's see how we can do it so first of all for the sake of simplicity i am assuming that we are only dealing with 8 bits of number right so the idea is simple what we do we simply pre compute count of set bits of all the numbers in 8 bit representation right now the question is so how many numbers are possible if we have 8 bit representation it's equal to 2 to the power 8 minus 1 it means 255 numbers are possible if we have 8 bits okay so it means we are going to pre compute count of all the set bits between number 0 to 255 so to count set bits between 0 to 255 what we do we simply create an array of size 256 why 256 because array index starts from 0 so one so we need one extra space to store 255 numbers okay so this is going to be our array and here we are simply storing count of set bits of each number so it means count of set bits in 0 is 0 count of set bits in 1 is 1 2 is 1 and 3 there are two set bits so this way we store count of set bits for all the numbers between 0 and 255 right so now if we count number of set bits in number 2 then we will simply go to second index and we get our count of set bits that is equal to 1 okay and we can uh, perform this operation in big of one time means constant time and simply in case of 5 we simply go to index 5 and get count of set bits that is equal to 2 in constant time so this is the simple idea the idea is just to pre compute count of set bits of all the numbers between 0 and 255 and then and whenever we need to find the count of set bits we simply go to that index and get the count of set bits Okay so far so clear now let's extend this solution to 32 bits numbers 
because in java the integers are stored in 32 bit representation okay so now we know the count of set bits in 8 bits number okay because we have pre computed all these results so let's see this binary representation of any random number so when you see here you will you see that there are 32 bits 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 and i have divided all the 32 bits in four segment and in each segment there are eight bits okay now we already know how to find count of set bits in eight bit numbers right so here the idea is simple we count number of set bits in each octet right because in each octet you see that there are eight bits and we know that how to count number of set bits in eight bits right and how to do it let's see it let's consider first octet only it means i am talking about only first octet okay so let's consider first octet first so we have a number like this okay if you look at this number this number is out of range of 255 why because this bit represents 2 to the power 8 but this bit represents 2 to the power 10 so it means this number is out of this range of 0 to 255 so to count number of set bits we have to bring this number into this range okay now the question is how to bring this number into this range so the idea is simple so we need a number whose leftmost bits are all set to 0 in 3 octets and it has only 1 in 1st octet and when we do bitwise end with this number we get result something like this so now this number came in the range of 255 because all the bits on the left side are 0 and we have only 8 bits where the bits are set ok so far so clear and now the question is what is that number so that number is simply a 255 right because 255 is the highest number in 8 bit numbers so in 255 all the bits are set in first octet and all the bits are unset in all the remaining 3 octet ok so now our work is simple now you have 8 bit number and we know that how to count number of set bits in 8 bit number simply go to that index and get the number of count so first octet is processed and we get the number of count of set bits in first octet now let's move on and talk about second octet now this is our second octet now second octet is also out of range of 0 to 255 so now we have to bring this uh, octet in the range of 0 to 255 and to bring it in the range what we do we have to just shift this octet to this place so we have to move this octet in place of first octet and how we do it so whenever we want to shift anything we use right shift operator and here in this case we have to right shift this octet by 8 position right because we want to ignore all the 8 bits coming right side of it ok and move this octet in this place and move this octet to this place and then and once we move this octet to this place our problem reduces to exactly this problem right and then what we do we simply do bitwise end with 255 so that our all the bits get unset all the left bits get unset and we have only bits set in first octet and then this number also comes in range of 255 and then we simply get the number of set bits by going to that index so our second octet is also sorted now let's go to third octet now what to do in third octet so how to count number of bits in third octet we uh, follow the same step in second octet we shift this octet by 8 position but now in third octet we simply have to shift this octet by 16 position because now we have to ignore all these bits right and bring this octet in first position and by doing this we bring this octet in the range of 0 to 255 and again we have to do bitwise end with 255 to unset all the left bits and then we have a number that exists between 0 to 255 and then we simply have to get the count of set bits ok so our third octet is also sorted out so now let's move on to fourth octet so what we do in fourth octet we are going to shift 24 positions because in fourth octet we have to ignore all this bit in the third octet we have to ignore all this bit in second octet and similarly in first octet also so this octet moves in place of first octet and when we move this octet to first place then obviously all the left bits are going to unset because when we do right shift all the previous bit 
was unset by right shift operator so in this case we do not need to do bitwise end with 255 we get a number that is between the range of 0 to 255 and we get count of set bits by going to that index so this is the idea we are going to follow okay so now if we want to count total set bits then what to do we simply do count of set bits of first octet plus second octet plus third octet plus fourth octet in this way we get count of set bits of 32 bit numbers so this is the basic idea we are going to use to solve this problem okay so let's see how to implement this approach so here is the implementation to solve this problem so we have a function count set bits and this function is expecting an input n so we have created an array of size 256 by the name lookup table and we initializing the index 0 with 0 right so index 0 represents number 0 and there are 0 set bits in number 0 so that's why we are initializing it with 0 and then we are running a loop from 1 to 256 and in each iteration we are counting number of set bits in that number okay and here also we are using Brian Kernighan's algorithm so you might be wondering how this piece of code is working let me show you how it is working so index 0 stores count of set bits in number 0 so the count of set bits in number 0 is 0 so in next iteration when i becomes 1 we are simply doing i and i minus 1 1 minus 1 and we are doing plus 1 so binary representation of 1 is 0 0 0 1 and 1 minus 1 becomes 0 so binary representation of 0 is 0 0 0 so it comes out to be 0 0 0 0 and after that we are doing plus 1 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 so it means there is only one set bit in number 1 okay so this is how it's working now if i equal to 2 we simply doing 2 and 2 minus 1 plus 1 so binary representation of number 2 is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 and 1 2 minus 1 is 1 so binary representation of 1 is 0 0 0 1 and if we do and we get 0 0 0 0 it is equal to 0 so when we go to index 0 we get 0 so 0 plus 1 is going to be 1 so in case of 2 also the count of set bits in 2 is 1 so this is how this piece of code is working okay so what we are doing in last line we are simply doing n and 255 we get a number that number uh, is in the range of 255 so we go to that index and get the count of set bits plus we shift n by 8 positions to get the count of set bits in second octet we get a number we go to that index and get the count of set bits and we follow the same steps in other two octet also okay so let's understand this piece of code with an example so let's say the value of n is 1000 and the output is 6 why because in thousands we are having 6 set bits so this is our first octet and there are 3 set bits here this is our second octet and we have 3 set bits here this is our third octet we have 0 set bit here and this is our fourth octet we have 0 set bits here so if we pass n equal to 1000 it will give you output as 6 and you know how it works so talking about the time complexity of this function so we are doing some pre-computation and the pre-computation loop is running 255 times so we can say that this is a constant order of growth because this 256 does not depend upon the input and the the second operation is finding the set bits so our this operation is also running in constant amount of time right so the overall time complexity of this function comes out to be big of 1 plus big of 1 that is equal to big of 1 great so far so clear so now let's have a quick recap of what we have learned so far so we are given a problem to count number of set bits in a number we saw the brute force approach to solve this problem and the time complexity of that solution was big of number of bits in a number and then we saw the efficient approach using Brian Kernighan's algorithm and that solution gives us the time complexity of big of log of n and then we saw the more efficient approach of solving this problem so in that approach we simply compute count of set bits between 0 to 255 and then we use and then we use those pre-computed values to find count of set bits in each octet of a number and the time complexity of this approach was big of 1 
so i hope now you have a good understanding about how to find count of set bits in any bits of number for example it may be of 8 bits numbers 16 bits number 64 bits number or 32 bits number okay so this is it for this video thanks for watching see you in the next video